Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. You never know, guess where we are today? We are at the Laundromat, doing a review of Season 3 of American Horror Story. Well, I already did a review. In fact, I did three or four reviews And I don't think it. anybody's going to want to hear any extensive review uh probably it'd be interesting sure to see do. since i'm a female and uh <clears throat> it really basically was a mostly female season they only had a few evan peters was in it but for the most part he really didn't have that much of a dialogue it must have been pretty easy for him to uh, act in it because he what happened was he was in uh, an accident, and there's all kinds of mystery about that, and revenge, which had nothing to do with him. He didn't do anything wrong. He just got caught up in it. He was in a bus, and the witch overturned the bus because she was gang raped by the other people who were on the bus, and um, he got killed. And he was cut up pretty badly and um, when he got one of uh, a witch was able to put him back together like Humpty Dumpty instead of not being able to put him back together she was able to put him back together but he was kind of um, mindless it was like he well he looking was back yeah looking back I he hate he to say that but he, it was true he acted retarded like he, the way he, it was really funny like Safi, probably one of the funniest moments of the season is when his mom is assaulting him and yeah. and then he's like No and he just <laughs> he just pushes her away I think like that shook him. And he kills her and it's just it shook him he, out of his uh mode because he got better <laughs> and better and better. One of the witches he had met at this party where this other witch got gang raped. And uh, basically, these girls could take care of themselves because they had all kinds of powerful magic. But anyway, she was she liked him. He liked her, and so they were kind of together the whole season. But you know, it, together in relative terms, because it, together as in she just raped him the whole season. She didn't do anything. Along the with was that other girl. along with the mean girl. The mean girl. And it was hilarious because it's like. They were clearly doing it as, as like, a thing where, like, teenage girls could fantasize about, like, ooh, wouldn't it be really uh, cool if you're a teenage girl and you could have your own Evan Peters <laughs> and, and he can barely talk or function. Yeah, he's but but you, you can have it. you can have sex with him all the time and treat him like a child. That's really good, though. You know, <laughs> it's, it's really creepy when you think about it, the way that they treated this character. And I'm saying that because if they did the opposite, if they had a female character who can barely function and all, and all the, the guy does is have sex with her the whole time, people would say that it's like a, a rapist. It's like a rapist storyline. It's like, what if uh, Bill Cosby had a personal slave or something... And it's like, uh, but it, if it's a female and a, ma a man, it's perfectly okay. Yeah, that's it's true. It's pretty weird. I just don't look at that kind of thing. Well, it's you like... Know, you have two differing opinions. It, opinions and, but it's the fact that all the, all the other people brought back to life that are the, fully functional. Yeah, that's the thing. That, But see, that's the point. Is it's, this season should have been called Coven um, Never Say Die which I think that's the name of a Bond movie, but it really applies here because everybody who died, at one point, they would be brought back to life. And it was just people who did bad things, people who didn't deserve to die, any kind of circumstance, except I guess one of them would be if they got eaten by, uh, by the uh, alligators, uh, one of the witches said that was impossible to, to replace, to put that person back together. But um, 
Because they have to physically put them back together with uh, mud. So and mud. Yeah. And all kinds of... They just... They showed it a little bit at the beginning, but they didn't show it after that. So you never saw the, the workings of that putting back together. But... So that was kind of... A, I mean, it was weird because it was kind of like a jolt and a constant jolt because the person would die and you'd be like, oh, wow... That's terrible. Oh, yeah, that's great. And then they'd be alive the next moment. And um, Yeah, when you think about, like, with Mean Girl... Yeah, the she, Mean Girl. She gets killed. It was a great death. It, it was, was an a, accident, too. It was a great story. And then she's brought back to life only to get killed again. Yeah. Well, she was bad. And she... Uh, and... Uh, oh, Safi, she's the best character of the series she got, to some she people. She strangled. Anyway, um, some people think she is like a goddess. Well, she's not a goddess. She's a mean girl. Yeah, she's, she's been a mean. Everything I've ever seen her in, she's a mean girl. Now there's some kind of thing on YouTube where she has some kind of line of, I don't know, home goods. You know, like uh, pillows or uh, you know, curtains. What, that what kind are of what, thing. Are, what are they pillows so that you can suffocate your competition? Or I don't know. But she's she's dyed her hair it's very blonde. I mean, it's really almost bleached blonde, and um, it has her name and and then it's talk. And I go, I didn't even bother to look at it that much because I don't. I'm not going to buy anything new. Try not to anyway. I did a little bit, but I want them to have an American Horror Story convention. Yeah, I wish they would do that. Called American Horror Convention. Anyway, let's see. What other characteristics? First, the season has tons of people who die and are brought back to life. And then all the male characters, you have Evan, like we said. He never, he does not have much dialogue. It's mainly grunting and... and No! Yeah, growling and... <laughs> uh, and it, it's, you know, he is a really nice boy. I guess he's real responsible. He's a job... This before he got messed up, and his mother was abusing him, and you find this out after he's the the, the one of the witches, the one who liked him. Uh, she was trying to do his mother a favor. But Safi, you're and, skipping. Uh, yeah, but anyway, you're skipping the part where this bitch Zoe, she takes canned tuna, puts it in a bowl. And then puts some Miracle Whip in the ma- in the tuna, and mixes it together, and she's gonna feed that to Evan Peters. Okay, I mean, you're making me sick. Th- th- she wanted to give that to him. Remember? No, no, I don't. That was disgusting, Sophie. Like I was like, what the hell? Like this is this is some modern bitch cooking. Well, no, like, it's like th- tuna this fish is, salad this without is some, the celery and the onion. This is some fucking TikTok bullshit that you see like. Food hacks number five. How to make tuna salad without actually making tuna salad. Yeah. You just put some canned tuna and some mayonnaise in a bowl. Yeah. And it's like, oh, God. that That's disgusting. It was gross. I, it was, I did didn't you see, see that? that? No. She did that. I didn't. Well, anyway. Canned tuna mayonnaise. Anyway. With rat poison. Yeah, uh, she never did that. No, uh, they implied it. Well, she fell in love with him. She wasn't going to give him rat poison. She thought maybe he's too messed up, so she's going to give it to him. And then he ran <clears throat> away. And also, uh, Fiona, the head witch, and that is played by... Jessica Chastain. No, Jessica Lang, who is a really... You know, she's gotten awards for her acting. Kathy Bates is in it. She has several awards, <clears throat> and um, <laughs> God, I just can't think of people's names. There was the woman who played the voodoo queen, and she was perfect. They, since this was t- supposed to be taking place in New Orleans, you know, they have voodoo, and she was a voodoo goddess who'd been living for three hundred years, and uh, Kathy Bates had been living since. I don't know if it was 300. No, it wasn't. It was since 1830 and before um, she had been brought back by the voodoo 
or she was made to live eternally by the voodoo queen and Fiona, the head supreme witch, who has more powers than any other witch. Was she really a supreme, though? Like, Yeah, she was. And after, she brought Kathy ba- She dug her up and know. brought her out of the ground. She wasn't really that powerful. I mean, she she had a, a serial killer kill all the witch hunters for her because she's too lazy to do it herself. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about the other men. There's, see, there's really very few. Well, yes. Like full characters. There, I mean, the real, there's really no Yeah, you made the point. Character. You made the point that, like, the male characters were very stilted and and lifeless, and and it was almost like... They were very thin. They have... They, have, they, were, they were terrible, and, and it, it was unfortunate because a lot of them could have been really cool. Yeah, they they had two of the characters. One was a ghost, and he had been a serial killer, and they and he lived in the house, the ghost, and they brought him back to life. He was this, he was a very good uh, musician, and he killed people with an axe. He was a serial killer. He killed multiple people, and um, he became Fiona's lover, which was really weird. That that, that was a weird bad yeah. story line. And it sounded like she, the way she talked, she was really just using him, but yeah. I wasn't sure what she was using him for, except to keep herself occupied, because she was, her time as a the supreme witch was fading away, because it, it would be like that for anybody. And uh, so somebody in their coven, which they didn't have very much of a coven, very small, was going to be, that by doing the ceremony, which is called, what, the Seven Wonders? It wasn't a very good coven either. Like, they all yeah. just kept betraying each other. It so. was terrible. Uh, they would, that person would appear as the Supreme Witch, and they would take over, and they would actually take her powers. And, um, anyway, that was another star who's been in every American Horror Story. Who, Crybaby? Crybaby, except this last yeah. season, which was about... And it's very interesting. We talked about this. We just did the season, this past season that was on this year, uh, about the uh, AIDS epidemic in New York City and the gay community. Well, see, we I just had something on the news about oh. that like two days ago, oh, well, I, uh, where somebody had kept a diary and they were they wrote about the epidemic and how it affected the community and but there was something the thing else is, too but I don't remember. The thing is Sophie I is, didn't read the is, article. is the crybaby is she well, did she do a good job crying this season? It's Sarah like, Paulson. How too. many times did she cry? Was she the cried crying a few effective? Times. Yeah, like she the, she ended the show crying. She ended the story pretty much crying. Well, the one for time herself. she uh she was upset because Another thing, this well, this one of the witches was was as, like as old as her mother, and she had killed two witches on a council, which they did have a council, and, and the uh, council was trash. Was overseeing what they did, but they didn't really do a good job at all. And Sarah Paulson, somebody had thrown acid in her face and her and destroyed her eyesight, and. Uh, this witch, Myrtle, I just call her, her name was Myrtle, she took the eyes of these pe- people on the witches' council and gave them to uh, Sarah Paulson. And, is it Cordelia? And, um... I just call her Crybaby. Yeah, I know. I think her name in the story is Cordelia. And then, <clears throat> anyway... Because she, that's, since that's she all she did does. That, since she did that... She felt, after everything was said and done, she felt like she should be burned to death. So, uh... Yeah, but just that. say what you think. Like, what do you think about this stuff? Like, talk about, like... Well, I, what, what, I, what did you think about... You know, you were saying a lot of thoughts out loud for once while you're watching the show. And all well, of a sudden, you're just explaining I'm just ta- I, well, things again. I'm having again. to tell you who's in it, because I can't just... E- I can't just say my thoughts until you're, you would, wouldn't know what I was talking about. Then the other main story was Kathy Bates, who's an excellent actress and another, like a villain, if you remember Misery. 
She was terrible in that. And then... Uh, well, she was evil. She <laughs> wasn't terrible at acting. No, she's not it. terrible like that. She is evil. She's a really good actress. She could probably do anything. And you have her story, and she was an abuser and a sadist and a torturer, and she even tortured her own daughters back in, like, 1830. And this voodoo queen, that's another part of the story, and I can't think of her name, and I apologize. I, I, I have Angela Bassett. Angela, Angela Bassett plays this voodoo queen. She's really... She's really magnificent. She's a perfect person to play this part. And all the stuff with the voodoo, their rituals, and their little ceremonies where they were torturing people, it was really cool. And so, anyway, there's a story between them and from way back in 1830, and that is now brought to today. Because the voodoo queen's still living. She's been living for 300 years. Well, Sophie, people have already watched the season, okay. so they know all this stuff. All right. Well, I guess the thing is, Marco told me that um, he had done some research, because he does a little bit further research into what he's watching. And some of these characters were actually real, real. Or there was a legend about them. So maybe they were, maybe they weren't, but they have been talked about and I feel like the writers of this show um, did the research and saw, found these characters and thought the stories were interesting like the axe man they brought to life he's real and then the voodoo queen was real and then the Kathy Bates character was real and uh, they brought these characters and they brought their stories and interwove them with this coven story. But the problem is, is that they were a hindrance to the well, show. And, and it, it, what happened was they, they'd have to switch over to what was going on with them and try to have it have something to do with the coven. And it just didn't... Uh, it, it, um, they left things out. It was like... It, 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 the, it, the story fell off. Well, for instance, the, stilted. the axe man. I read something about the axe man in real life. There was some sort of like a race related thing where, or not race, but like uh, apparently like all the victims were a certain type of people. Like they're all Italian immigrants or something. Mm. And so there was more to it than just killer going around killing people. Like he he really didn't have a character like that they had Kathy Bates this whole thing about how she can't be redeemed she has to keep killing and torturing for some reason which didn't make any sense and Fiona is the one who dug her up but the so people already know that they the learned that like 10 years and ago and they said that because uh, she needed information well but the axe man all he does is, like, kill whoever Fiona wants him to kill. It doesn't make any sense because you think about real serial killers. Real serial killers, they're not just going to stop killing. And so... After you bring him back to life. It's weird how he he doesn't really kill unless she wants him to kill. And it's another thing where it's a male character written to be just an object of the female character to use. Yeah, so you have two... Now, we've talked about two male characters. They're, and they're just, like Marco said, that's what they were being... They were used. Because they were victims of... I mean, the Axemen didn't ask to be, come back to life. They wanted him to find a witch that was the, the mean girl got stabbed to death. And they wanted, instead of looking for themselves, which is another mystery, <laughs> and something, to, why just, couldn't they have done that themselves? They just can't search They the have house. to ask the axe man, because he's a ghost in the house, for some reason. You, you just think about, with police, what do they do? They suspect that somebody killed someone, so they get a search warrant, and they search the person's house. Like, they had that whole John Wayne Gacy movie in the 90s. And it, and it ended up being all about the search warrant where they they found an excuse to go in the house to like g pretend to go to the bathroom 
and then they found enough evidence to get the search warrant. And then in in this, it's like it kind of shows like how bad it is that they can't go to the police or anything because like they could all they had to do like even the council. What's the council's excuse? Well, what, like, why do the count? What is just, the council supposed to do? They all, don't do anything. All they do is just sit around in their stupid costumes, acting like uh, pretentious, and and so it's like they were really terrible characters. Yeah, they were. I guess the only thing that was good was their eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. So there's just a lot of uh, weird uh, the storylines. They, what happened was, like told you, and you already know, Fiona wasn't going to be the Supreme Witch anymore. They have this all, all through history. They would have, the one would fade out and die, and somebody would take over, and they would show themselves when they do this ceremony. But what did you Which think? was never explained, because oh, okay. they show this little, like a little silent movie at the beginning, and they defined the seven wonders and uh and and i were like we didn't know what that was i i didn't know what that was about until they started doing the ceremony and then they say each of the seven things and they asked which witches there were um how many were competing three um oh, wait a minute let's see four there were four witches competing or to see who was the supreme witch to take over. And, um... How do they know how to do any of this yeah, stuff? Yeah, how did they... They, they, just, they never show them being trained to do anything. Yeah, they're never trained. They the never adult, watch... They never the, watch out for yeah, them. Yeah, they never protect them. They yeah. never know what's going on All with they can them. do is say, come home early. Don't stay out. You're in danger. Yeah, oh, Which, no. oh boy. Wear something black. Uh, they say that too. I didn't hear that. I think that would call attention to themselves. That's what Jessica Lang said in episode one. She said, no, "We're, we're going on a field trip. Like the only thing she does for them the whole season." And she says, "Wear something black." <laughs> and it's like, wow, this is like this is very intelligent writing. <laughs> and so. Uh, but one thing that I brought up, which I I didn't think about, is the fact that with Kathy Bates's character, she expresses how uh, she regrets uh, abusing her daughters and torturing them, and it's unfortunate because you think about who should have been the supreme, it would have actually been a better twist and a better ending for Kathy Bates's character to become the supreme. Because then she could have redeemed herself for how she treated her daughters by protecting the girls at the coven. Because she did that on Halloween, or at least she tried to. Like, and, and so it would have been cool if like they did that as a storyline. But that's another thing where it was real life was a hindrance. Because it's almost like since she was a real killer. They couldn't do anything to make her look good. They yeah. couldn't do it. And it's like, I didn't even know she was real. I wouldn't have even known unless I just happened to look it up. So, like, what what's the harm? Yeah, sure. I don't... It's a, that, that was the thing. You have all these stories. And I just said that. And then, like I said, it was all women. And yeah, the all had, women. Uh, her name Sarah Paulson's character the Cry daughter baby. the daughter of Fiona she had actually had a husband he knew she was a witch which I thought was interesting and they had this big thing about her having a baby and not being able to have a baby but ends up he's uh, part of this witch hunting group and has and they've always been but I think he really is supposed to love her but he's very weak I mean it's just he's just He's, he's very paper thin as a character. And he then did do one very badass thing, though, where he basically almost killed the entire voodoo coven. The whole voodoo group. Which was so unexpected because the whole season you're just wondering who's the villain. 
Like, I thought the voodoo coven was the villain. Yeah. So, it was very surprising and badass when he came in there and just wrecked them all with silver bullets. He had uh, handguns, he had rifles, and they all had silver bullets. And it was his one good scene. And they ruined it by, like, trying to make it into some sort of, like, a hate crime equivalent. Like, there, I saw people saying, like... It's so hard to watch that salon scene today because you see this kind of thing happen all the time. And it's like, I don't know what this has to do with anything. Like, that that woman, she was threatening to put a pin in his heart in the, a voodoo doll of him. And so he, it was like with Nacho and Better Call Saul where he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. And he he did the most coolest thing possible, and it it was so unfortunate because he was like a second away from being able to kill Angela Bassett, and it would it would have been really uh, something else if such a one off character did that. Yeah, but so you have him. So I've I've named the Axeman. You have Evan. You have the husband who's a witch hunter, and he gets killed. And then you have another supernatural character, and I don't know, he's a voodoo priest, or he's some kind of a spiritual being. Oh, remember, Safi, Queenie says that he's a god, and you should respect him. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, like, fuck that. He's fucking evil piece of shit. And he, and they really, his, like I said, all the voodoo stuff was cool. All the costume. He he was really cool looking. Like he had a distinct look. He did. He looked like he could be like on Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Like as a villain. Yeah. uh, Or something like that. The problem was he was another bad character. He didn't have any character at all. No, not at all. He just was bad. And you think about. Bad or good? Bad. It's. it, It. so basically, I think. Oh, and then, and then you have the. And I didn't even know what he was until Marco told me today. He's the butler, and he ends up being a ghost because one of the young witches kills him. I didn't understand that, and something about his tongue, and it's just he's a whole mystery. But he he and he likes dolls, and he likes to dress up in uh, women's clothing, but not in just any clothing, like a nighty. 90s with a nightcap and then the other one was like a like a wedding dress like a beautiful silk beaded uh cream colored uh dress and um he advises he comes back and advises or rats on people and says you should do this because that person's evil or you know, you can't let them get away with it. The thing that they ruined is the fact that none of the storylines tied together. No, that's the that and what I'm saying. They have all these stories. They don't go together It was well. weird because they had this whole storyline where he was loyal to Fiona. Yeah. And, and even though she friend-zoned him because she's a bitch. And, uh, and then in the present day, of course, she gets with a serial killer, the Axeman. And and you, th- I thought like, is this ever gonna be an issue? Like, is he ever gonna, like, uh, cause some sort of damage because he finds out that she says, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna date the loyal butler who cut out his own tongue for me. I'm gonna date a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's never, that never becomes an issue. And you think like, that could have been something that tied together. You know, a lot of the stuff on the show, it's easy to come up with ways for it to tie together. Yeah. It's just that they don't do it for some reason. And I don't know why. That's the thing. You just, you got to, I, I, I don't, these writers, I just don't understand them. Because they were good stories. And they were intriguing. The voodoo and the 1830 woman and, uh... She actually, they had her house restored, and it was on, they actually had, it was like a museum. And she was like, supposed to be like a horror queen who, they all knew about her abuse. 
abusing and killing slaves. I don't know about if they knew about her daughters. And uh, they, uh, they had tours and they had a tour guide. And so, I mean, it's just, if you're gonna have these stories, which were really good and interesting, why can't you do make the effort to tie them together better? So, um, anyway, it was very dark, literally. And another <laughs> thing I noticed, too, about the characters is they were not loyal to each other. Yeah. They would do anything behind their backs, and they were like backstabbers. And, and literally, I mean, killing each other and, and abusing each other and... Um, Raping each other. No, that Evan and uh, well, the mean girl forced that Zoe into a threesome, so technically, and that was weird. I've never seen that before on TV and a TV show. Yeah, that was another thing where it just felt like they and did she, that to please teenage girls. I don't know, and she said is, some filthy language. I'm just surprised that they allowed that on the show. It's I, weird because it's never allowed with the opposite anymore. No. And it's like this weird double standard. Yeah, that'll that'll change. I just, uh, it's just weird. But anyway, so you have weak male characters, and you have some intriguing, possibly single, intriguing stories that don't come together well as a, uh, because you know you have several, and they don't come together in a very good fluid story there's lots of stop start stop start especially this thing like I said about bringing him back to life I have never seen that in my life where you know you might have a character in a Hallmark movie at Christmas time or something in fact I just saw something recently uh, where a character uh, uh, was part it was part of three ghosts and they were like modern ghosts of Christmas like visiting or you know like a Scrooge thing they had Christmas past Christmas day and Chris you know Christmas present Christmas future and <clears throat> one of them they allowed to come back to life and live with the person that they were had visited and that that's very unusual that was one person this was like over and over and over again you have two girls, was it two or one, Myrtle, she had already been burned up by, in a fire, and one of these witches, they called her the Swamp Witch, brought her back to life. And so she got on fire again. They weren't going to bring her back again, but I mean, you ha you're having characters who are brought back to life multiple times. I mean, not just multiple people, Multi one person multiple times is weird and then um, then we have one more thing and that was Stevie Nicks and it was very interesting the day I saw the episode where she first appears was the day she died in real life of Fleetwood Mac and I thought that what, how, what are the chances what are the odds that uh I'm watching this episode, and the girl just, oh, the Swamp Witch, uh, loves Stevie Nicks, and she knows all the words to her songs, and dances, and sings. The and Swamp Witch was just one giant waste character, yeah, because... it was, I don't even what, know what that was about. What either. was the purpose of her story? She's there, and then, uh, and then she dies at the end. She like, dies in the Seven Wonders ceremony. She didn't survive one of the tasks. Which is really weird. Um, and they actually bring <clears throat> Stevie Nicks onto the show. I think she was in at least two or three episodes. And she sang. And she played the piano. It was That was very interesting. So I'm very weird. Because the day, like I said, that she first appears in the episode I was watching, she died. Well, I need to do an episode of, like, the top... I mean, a video of, like, the top ten best and worst celebrity cameos on the show. Well, I think she did more than a because, cameo. Yeah, she was a cameo. Next season, Neil Patrick Harris comes in as a cameo. He's oh, trash. Yeah. He's yeah. terrible. He's cringeworthy. 
He's awful. He's horrible. He's not a real horror person, I don't think. But he's a he's a great actor. It's just he is a good actor. It, I, I'm not gonna go to get into that because that's a part of season four. And I have to watch that next. But it was very heavy. It was dark, very dark, literally dark. I could not see what was going on at sometimes, and it didn't matter whether I was watching in the daytime or the nighttime. It didn't matter. It was so dark I couldn't see what was going on, and. uh I had to ask Marco about it, and I was going to Google it if I just couldn't, if he didn't know what I was talking about. Marco's got a really good memory, though, but, uh, so, anyway, I appreciated the fact they did, um, a season on witches. I just wish, with, with all these wonderful stories that they were able to find in their research to do this show, that they could have put them together again, because you had really good actresses, Jessica Lange and Kathy Bates are primo actresses. It isn't just Meryl Streep who's a primo actress. I'm not, I just mentioned well, her as you an know example. You know they are really good. They both won awards you, off the wazoo. You know who's better than Meryl Streep? Meryl Streep's daughter. Oh, yeah. Who appears yeah, next? Who, that is. who appears next season? She's oh, trash. Really? She's trash. Uh, well, I she's straight up trash. I, I haven't seen her do anything that's Sophie, that great. How could they do that to her? I don't know, Marco. But my laundry is getting close to. Looks like one of them's done. Sophie, I'm gonna have to go in and fold you, the clothing. Do you and, know who's better than Meryl Streep's daughter? No. Nobody. <laughs> this show for me to give as a food review because remember but wait wait you you have to talk about the biggest betrayal because the, okay, it did well, it did piss you off with uh queenie and her bullshit where all of a sudden out of nowhere she just betrays the entire coven uh okay. for gumbo and then she turns in kathy bates to be tortured and then she comes back and acts like she did nothing wrong like she acts to Kathy One Bates. One of the witches is an Amer- African American girl, and I think her name is Sadike. Um, Sabibi or Sadike or something, and uh, she's very famous. And um, she was in something I can't remember. It's something I probably didn't watch, and that's why I don't remember it because I didn't watch it. I just wasn't, you know, I don't want to see that many movies. It was a movie I think that she was in. And uh, she was part of the coven, too. And when uh, Fiona brought in Kathy Bates, she brought her in. Remember, she was in the ground alive because she couldn't be killed. And the voodoo woman did this because she had she had killed her husband. And uh, anyway, so she brought her out of the ground. And she was their maid. So she did all this maid stuff. She cooked and she cleaned and she wore a maid's outfit and everything. And Sadiqe, I just, I'm just going to call her Sadiqe, she decided, she befriended her, and she even took her out to get uh, fast food. And this Kathy Bates, I'm talking about a woman who lived in the 1830s, had never heard of fast food and ordered it, and she just loved it. And they kind of became friends, which was weird because Kathy Bates was a racist, a pure racist back in her day. I mean, she killed tons of slaves, and I mean, she tortured them to death. She cut them up, took pieces off of them, and ugh, gross stuff. Even her own daughters, though, not just slaves. Anyway, for some reason, Siddiqui goes to the voodoo queen, and she decides, uh, you know, all whites are horrible, and they should be punished, and so... Yeah, she, it's really weird. And the voodoo queen, what she wants in return for being her, I don't know what you want to call her, her friend bitch. or something, she wants her, her, this girl to go get Kathy Bates and bring her to her so she can imprison her again or kill her, torture her, whatever. She can't kill her because she's the one who put the spell on her about living f- f- that makes her live forever. And so it was just, it, the, they had built this whole thing up. I mean, 
like a few episodes where she was she and Kathy Bates were becoming friends. It was a good story. I, that was my favorite story. It was of really nice. The first half. Because it was like Kathy Bates was learning about African Americans and how they were not objects or things or slaves. They were people. Oh, they're not objects. Who Evan, had Evan, feelings. Evan Peters is an object. He is really an object. <laughs> no! <laughs> Literally. And, uh, oh boy. I have one laundry going. Okay, and um, I can see it from here. Um, she ta- she does trick her and take her to there. and then, It's horrible. And she ends up putting her in a cage. They don't feed her, but she doesn't need to eat. She's going to live forever, so she's not going to starve. But she likes to eat, but they don't feed her. And they, and they even show Stike bringing her, uh, you know, like a hamburger or something. You can see it was fast food. It was wrapped up and... It's horrible because you just think about like, oh, I be- this betrayal, it really did a lot of progress for her. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I bet that's going to make her not be racist anymore. It didn't do anything for <laughs> either one of them. Yeah. It didn't help her with the voodoo woman. And the voodoo woman got pissed off and so she decided to cut her head off. And she cuts Kathy Bates' heads, uh, head off and Sadiqa is still being a bitch. And she gets the head and takes it back to the coven kitchen and she her house in the in her room. It looks like a kitchen, but anyway, that doesn't matter. And she shows her she wants to show her roots. Remember the show multi mini series roots? It was really good. Uh, and um all these different um oh do the Django, maybe, and uh, <laughs> let's see what Django. else. And then like some kind of, some like historical footage with Selma, the march in Selma, the the bridge. It was cringeworthy because you're the whole time. I was just thinking, you know, if I was Kathy Bates, I'd be like, you know, fuck you. You're she, a fucking traitor ass bitch. She can't do anything. She's just a head. Nobody can trust you. A talking head on a shelf and which was really bizarre like regardless of Queenie's race nobody should trust her again after what she did to them yeah nobody because because there's no reason there's no legitimate reason there wasn't like they had some sort of a thing where it was like uh you know that where they even made fun of her they're like oh just because we were mean to you a little bit means you're gonna betray us like wow that really shows a lot about you yeah that that was the thing another thing and I did say it before there was no loyalty between anybody between one witch to the other no loyalty to anybody and that really bothered me because I thought somebody there should be some loyalty somewhere and um, so that was goofy really goofy and and you saw and it, you know you're talking about somebody from the 1830s and this would be like complete culture shock to them yeah they were racist they had slaves they've never seen a black person <laughs> as a human being they've seen them as an object oh well, wasn't that hilarious when she saw that woman for the first time and she's like out of my way slave and she she knocks her out with the candlestick because she's just so, she just has no idea what's going on. And it's she, just like she, making, having her, I was tell, <laughs> telling Marco that even having her as a maid was, was ridic- ridiculous. She, I mean, she did a good job. I'm not saying that. But, but how would she know how to do all that right. stuff? That's right. How would she know how to do, I mean, you're not, you're not hand washing the clothes. You're using a washer and a dryer. This is today. Um, and also cooking. When they cooked, they had to take take the chicken apart. They had to take pluck the feathers out and do the th- take the gullet thing out. Ugh, gross! And um, you know, clean it and everything before they could cook it. That's what happened. And she wasn't part of that. She was a lady. She had servants and yeah. slaves to do that kind of thing. So for her to be the maid, that was another thing. There's just so many questions you know and I can't help it I, I have to and you have the fact that the voodoo queen 
killed 300 babies. Yes, the Buddha queen lived for 300 years, and she said she had to kill a baby every year as like a sacrifice yeah. to this voodoo god guy, I think. The queen is okay with that. Yeah, she's okay with that. But she's not okay with Kathy Bates killing one baby in the and past. And both are bad. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody but, but wants to see that. But it's what? one baby versus 300. 300. The voodoo queen killed th uh, almost 300 because you don't know when she started. I mean, she lived for 300 years. That means she was born at the beginning of the 300th year. Well, she wouldn't have been killing any baby. She was a baby herself. So, at some point in that 300 years, she started killing... She explained it. They showed the whole origin. She, she said oh. that they made a deal... Oh, you didn't watch that? No, I watched it, but it was probably dark. I she said see what was going he, on. He said I needed to give him my services, and I thought it would just be sexual favors or something. And then I found out, oh, shit, I'm going to have to give him a baby every year. And it's like, yeah, that's that's the price. And and then she does it. She gives three hundred babies. She kills people. She tortures them. She does all the same stuff that Kathy Bates does, but because it's not targeted towards towards one race, it's treated as like she's doing like a heroic thing, or she's like a heroic character. And and she even steals a baby and yeah. today yeah. from a nursery in the hospital to kill but instead they had had another witch who was actually a down syndrome a woman who's been girl who's been on other things and she does she did she's very high functioning did an excellent job and they killed her instead she was actually in the coven and she had a big part, and they killed her. Well, she was a good character. They drowned her, and she went with the voodoo guy. You saw him walking away, and she was said, good, I'm glad to get out of here. I can't stand the way you guys act. I'm sick of these bitches. Yeah, and so... Like um, Queenie That was and, another story. I didn't uh, even talk about that. I'm not going to. The mean that, girl. That was another story that was in there, too. <sighs> that involved a neighbor. So I'm, that whole neighbor story was pointless too. Yeah, that was another thing that didn't need to be there. All, all the stuff just didn't tie together. No, good stories though, but they don't didn't tie together. If they tied together better, it would have been a lot better. I did appreciate though the, the stories individually were rich, and they had really good. Like the Voodoo King was good, and or it, whatever he was, it, God. It reminds me of that shitty ass movie we watched for Tom Cruise Day, which I'll never watch a Tom Cruise movie again uh. after after that experience. Uh, but it reminds me of that movie where they promised that all the stories would tie together. Remember? Yeah. All the characters would tie together, and then they never did. No. The tie-in was just that frogs rained, and so all of them had to deal with the frogs raining. Like, wow. Okay, well, I have to wrap it up because I have to get into the laundromat. Well, yeah, what, what's, takes your, my club. My food what's your food review? Is, it, since I felt like this was very heavy-handed and disorienting because the stories didn't go together, even though I like the individual pieces, but if you're going to present them that way, they have to go together. It's just going to work better if it does Did you like the music, Safi? Mm, no. I hated the music, and I didn't even bum, talk about bum, it. Bum, bum, no, but do you know bum, what it was like, bum. Safi? Just play that over it, and over and it, over and It was over like again. they were ripping off Rosemary's Baby oh. theme with yeah. the la, 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 la. Yeah. Like, that's what it was. It was rip off Rosemary's Baby. And the only, the only good thing, there was some the music terrible they, music uh, Myrtle played this uh, and I can't remember the name of it it's some kind of I can't even imitate it it's some you get a wire don't worry Sophie and you have to play it and it makes these sounds and it she would play it and like play a whole tune but it wasn't like a regular tune and it really went with the, the, the coven well, don't worry Sophie because season four has good music 
Okay, well, and then you had the Fleetwood Mac music, which is good. That music just didn't fit, though. Like, it never... It's like, what, why, why are they doing this? Because was yeah. she supposed to be a witch? I didn't get that. Yeah, I... she was. Oh, she was. Okay, because she had black on. She looked like she would be a witch. That'll make the QAnon people very pleased. They were all witches, <laughs> so... You know, I mean, they all dressed in, like, black. And uh, Marco said because Fiona told them that's what they had to do. So they all wore a lot of black. It's, I gotta go. it's stereotypical. There's so many stereotypes, too. Okay, but my, my but what's your food, food review, review is this what's bean soup. It only was supposed to have, like, one kind of bean. You know, a bean soup, you think about... Uh, cornbread and beans and so you make it into a soup it's kind of like a it's either a kidney beans or it's um great northern that's what it really usually is it's kind of a white bean and um and it's really good if it's made well it can be really good and you make cornbread and it lasts for a few days well the, so, the, the other person in our house yeah he got uh this disgusting bean soup mix from it wasn't even a mix wasn't it just like the beans yeah, stacked in together jar. in a jar yeah. yeah yeah and it was like 10 to 13 beans and i didn't want that and, that's and not bean soup it to was me. so gross that we didn't even eat it we just pretended like we ate yeah, it for ate four days else. it was boy but that was it, something i tasted it one night it was so gross it didn't have any flavor. Uh, it was so confusing tasting because it was just like mush. And it was so thick that it was like... Ugh. You know, that, that's, you know, it's just too heavy. Like pig slop. It, it, yeah, and it was, so it was very dark and very heavy. But I just want to say that the actresses... You know, some of those act they're they're really good. Yeah, the, the acting isn't the problem. No, it's the it's, it's the, the writing. Story. It's the writing. And I really wish that was a long this was done a long time ago. I really gotta get in there because there's somebody there that could take my laundry. But anyway, um they really need to do writers you really need to do better. You get paid to do this isn't your job. And a lot there are a lot of writers around because I've been a writer and um yeah, I know. I live in an area where... There's no where, evidence of that, though. Not right now. Anyway, there are a lot of writers in this area who write fiction and nonfiction, and uh, that's just this area. What about the rest of the country? There are writers everywhere who could take your place in a minute and do a lot better job. Go so, ahead, Safi. I'll goodbye, finish everybody. it up. No, I'm going to finish it Marco's up. going to finish up. Because there's some points to be made. Well, you already made some of your videos. No. It's, it's, uh, what happened was I thought it would be a really great idea, and I might even do a separate video where I just showcase all the graphs. So, I realized, you know, like a lot of people, that American Horror Story follows a typical formula throughout its entire series run where the stories start off really, really good. And I'm just thinking about season one. Fantastic. Uh, but then it falls apart. Season two. Fantastic. And then it falls apart at the end. Uh, season three, same thing. Season four, uh, weirdly up and down at the end. Uh, and then season ten, same thing times two. Season eleven, uh, was trashed the whole season because they were focusing too much on Dahmer. So, I wanted to try to have some sort of a visual to show how uh, accurate this is. And so I created this graph where you have the the longitude, or what do they call it? You have the, the vertical line is uh, the rating of the episodes, so 1 through 10 stars. And then on the bottom line, you have the different episode numbers. And so it's interesting because, I'm not kidding you guys, but for every season, except for season four, I it, ha it had the same shape where it starts off good, it dips down, it goes back up, and then it dips down and ends flat 
at the bottom. That was it was the same shape for every season and it blew my mind because it when when it's that bad, when it's that much like just out in the open how it's it, it's so like formulaic it's like how does it has to be like purposeful to some extent so it's really weird um and then Safi did hers and she was a lot nicer to the show uh the only episode she gave a bad rating was episode one which she gave a three out of ten uh the the rest of the episodes were sixes through nines Uh, But it was funny because the shape was still almost the exact same. It was the same, like, looking shape. And so it's really weird. Uh, And I'd really like to do that for every show that we watch now so that people can kind of see, like, a visual of, of, you know, how how the show goes. Because, like, keep in mind, we, we can like the show. Like, we've shown, like... I, I've given a lot of the episodes great ratings, and so it's not like we're biased against the show. Like, we're completely uh, into the show, you know, or else we wouldn't even be reviewing it. So, anyways, I can't wait to do my Season 4 review tomorrow, because it's going to be really, really epic. It's, it's just, it's going to be so full, uh, because there's so much stuff to talk about that it's like, oh... How am I going to get it all? I'm, I'm, it's going to be like hours long again. Or I, I'm just going to try to get it all done in one video though. Uh, I hope I have the space for it. So yeah, look forward to my season 4 review. So please... Oh, I should also mention... The reason why I had Safi start watching the show again... American Horror Story... Is because Safi did a... She did a boo-boo, Okay she almost got through the entire season two of Monk in one day. Like, she just would not stop watching Monk episodes. It was so hilarious because it just showed that, you know, with the right motivation, she could just get it all done. And she, she, you know, there really is no excuse of like, I don't have any time to watch that. Like, there really is no excuse it's just the lack of motivation uh, that gets in the way. And so it, I realized, like, oh, if you, if you can watch Monk in two seconds, then, oh, maybe you can watch American Horror Story as well. Uh, and so she... She, <laughs> she, <coughs> she had, a, like, a look of defeat on her face, like, oh, shit. So anyways, please like this video, comment, tell me again what you thought of season three because I know I know you're just you're so happy to have another video where I'm ragging on season three Uh, it's just I don't know it was so disappointing the fact that uh, nothing came together you know even seasons one and two the storylines they came together at the end Uh, the the stories in season three did not come together and then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to continue seeing American Horror Story videos. And by the way, Christmas is canceled. Uh, goodbye, bye, everybody.